Hello everyone. So in the last episode we worked on how to draw this box when we click and drag and now we are going to work on how to actually select the characters that, uh, that are under this box when I do a click and drag and select those actors and then I can command them all at once. So yeah, let's see how to do that today. Hello everyone. So last time in this strategy template, we worked on a method to show this drag when I drag, click and drag mouse to show a box. So we were now we are going to implement selecting these characters when I do a drag, click and drag like this. So we can see the click and drag area, but still we can't select them. So that's what we are going to work on now. And this part is continued from where we left off yesterday. So, okay. In the top down controller, this is select click input, and this is where we update the box. And when we release the button, this part is getting selected getting executed and we just simply stop drawing the box and this is where we should determine what are the actors that is inside the drawn box and how should we select that uh, this is where we should do the actual selection part okay for that here we had to read our note because this step is irrelevant from what we are going to do next so now here we are going to implement selection okay for that this is the way I'm gonna do if I draw a box you we have four points top um, let me explain it with the screenshot all right now let's say can we draw shapes here oh no I don't think so okay anyway let's say this is the box we draw I'll name this point P1 and this Q1 and P2 and Q2. So these are points in the screen space and we need to find out the relevant point that maps each of these points into the world space and create like a determine like a box volume which and and then we need to identify what are the selectable actors that is inside that volume so as the first step let's identify these mapping points in the world's space so for that here um, all right so to determine the relevant world space so uh, as I get the mouse position in the viewport I'll also get mouse position in the screen space because as I said this is easier to convert to the world space and I'll have another variable mouse start uh, I'll call it S pos because screen space position and I'll set it here like this we would get a false here and some invalid value or maybe zero zero if we are outside the 
wave port but let's discard that for now uh, now when we release here so I'm to read out node and collapse this to a function I'll call it select so if I go inside here nothing is there it's so now we can access mouse starting position screen space position and uh, I can get mouse position again and let's have another local variable i'll call it mouse n s plus mouse n position in screen space vect to d let me set that here Now, before anything, we need to make sure that we have some sort of uh, dragging happened. Otherwise, there is no point trying to determine what are the actors we have selected. So, if we don't haven't dragged the distance between these two vectors will be zero. That means it's just a simple click, not a dragging. So we can check if this is greater than zero. Oh, let's consider one because a small drag. Well, I don't think we should consider. And a branch. If this is true, that means we have actually dragged, clicked and dragged. So that means we do need to determine multiple actors that may have contained within the tracked box. So, as I explained in this screenshot, we need to identify these points P1, P2, Q1, Q2. Right now, let me get the start S position screen space position and end screen space position split this so i want p1 to always be the top left and p2 top right q1 to bottom left q2 to bottom right so if i get the minimum value of these two x values and uh, minimum value of these two y values and then make a vector to d this would be p p1 so p1 and um, q1 uh, p2 is top right so that means maximum of these two x values and the minimum of y value so duplicate p2 maximum x value minimum y value and q1 q1 would be minimum x value and maximum y value so Q1 as I said 
minimum x value and maximum y value and q2 would be the max of both maximum x value and maximum y value right okay now we have a screen space point but we need to find out the relevant points in the world's space on this landscape where these characters would be so um for that i'll we can do this t project screen to word so this is not exactly the point in the landscape but this is more like the point in the word so we get a point and a direction now I'll add some far away point in this direction so that we can do a line trace. If I multiply this with let's say hundred thousand, this should be enough, and add to this point. And if we use this point as the start. And this point as the end we would be able to do a line trace and determine the relevant point in the um, landscape on the landscape so let's do a line trace by channel I'll choose visibility and let's connect it here and yes sorry this is the start and this is the end I'll draw the debug type also right, let's see if we get anything I don't see anything yet. Which should I plug play as well? Oh, ah, yeah. See, we get this point. Okay. Now similarly, now we have a point, we can see the hit point in the red. Similarly, let me promote this to a function. Uh, screen to word position. Uh, well, uh, instead of position I'll call is not screen to world screen to uh, land mapping yeah and I'll turn this into a pure function and here also uh, we also we need to get the location of so Wait, why do I use multi line trace? I could just use line trace by channel. That should be enough. If it is true, we can return. With the value we can break this and get a location if it is false we can again return with nothing 
with 0, 0. I think it would be better if we have a true false value here just to say that we didn't get any hit but in this situation we would always get a hit because this is also a plane this blue C is also a plane so it should hit <coughs> okay now how will we select actors right Yes, this four times. Now, this won't be called unless I call, use them somewhere. So, uh, I'll promote these two variables. I'll call it WP1. W stands for world. WP2. And WQ1. Okay, now if I draw drag select, wait, why is this point not visible? This part is wrong. Mm, I think I may have made a mistake when I calculate Q1. I think it's Q1. Let's make sure. Yeah, it's Q1. Okay, so what's the problem? Ah, oh, right. We should use minimum x and maximum y. So here minimum x is coming from this one. And here we get maximum x. So instead I should have connected it like this. Right now it should be all good. Yeah, we got the four points. Now what we need to do is uh, doing a trace to determine the actors within the within a box that is created by those four points so how can we do that um, let's do something like this let's get the midpoint of oh, let's still play P1 and Q1. So I can do a look with point 5 P1 and Q1. So in here we would get a point somewhere like here. And what I'm gonna do is create in a box that would represent something like this and do a box trace this direction to this way so that we would cover this entire area so 0.5 okay uh, this is what i'm gonna do uh, box trace multi box trace for objects this is what i want to do So a starting point would be this and the end point 
this may not be accurate but let's just get blurb sorry blurb p2 and q2 um, 2.5 right let's use this one as the end and the half size so the half size should be mm, well for now let's just consider the distance between p1 and q1 mm, and we need to get the half size so multiply by 0.5 so make vector I think this should go in 2x y let's say 10 he said 100 let's see how it goes I don't know I'm not 100% sure how this will work and the orientation should be from P to Q, P1 to Q1. So find look at rotation from P1 to Q1. Object types. So this at the moment I'm only interested in selecting characters. So make array and I'll choose spawn debug type for duration all right shall we see what happens before we do anything else okay it seems to work ah wait now let me stop hide in the box so we can see exactly the point so let me skip this for now and uh, also i'll remove this debug type where we do the traces from the screen position to the landscape It is working, uh, but it's not 100% accurate. That is because, see, this point is wrong and this point is also wrong. The reason is because we are just considering only this distance and move it here but uh, in the world this distance uh, would be always larger than this distance because we are in a perspective camera not a isometric camera so therefore no matter what this part is closer to the camera compared to this part so therefore uh this distance is always exceeded so to prevent that i think if we break this uh if we break this trace into two parts and do one from here to here and another from here to here so that we wouldn't exceed at any time it would be it would work so basically to make sure that we are not exceeding the lines exceeding the bounds <coughs> let's try this let's uh, subtract 
and stop. Oh, sorry. Subtract Q2. Q1 from Q2. And then add the result into this. Right, and use it as the end. Also, when we consider the x distance, we can calculate the distance between P1 and Q1, and also um, P2 and Q2. This is becoming messy. We have the P1, Q1 distance here, all right. P2 distance to Q2 distance. And then we can get the minima out of these two as the X. Did I connect? Yeah. Right. Now if I select. Oh, that's wrong. Now wait. I should add to here. Not this one. Now you see. The. Now we haven't exceeded here. See? Now we are staying within this box, but we have missed this part. Uh, let me increase this Z a bit and increase the timeout also. clear see now we are staying within the bounds but we have just missed this part so to consider that area also let's do another box trace after this um, we duplicate Still, we haven't got into the selecting characters part, just getting the traces correct. That's all we are doing here. It's all uh, still right now. For that, we have to start drawing the box. Oh, wait, uh, we have to start drawing the box from this side to compensate for the missed part. So This time, the starting point would be the midpoint of P2 and Q2. That means this one. And the end would be the same point, midpoint, minus this one. which is the difference between Q2 and Q1 and that's the end and the size is same as before so we can directly connect here and the direction would be P2 to Q2 so I look at rotation from P2 to Q2 right now let's see see now we have considered 
all the area without missing anything and we also stay in within the boundaries see we haven't exceeded the boundaries anywhere okay now to do the actual selection part mm, for that let's have a branch to see if we get hit and then let's run a fifth row let's run a for each loop and for each element let's break uh, so we can access the actor and we can call program select with the true for each actor oh hold on no let's have a local variable local actor variable so let's just call it actors should be in the type of factor and array because we can have multiple hits from same actor so get actors and I'll add unique so we can add these actors only once if this actor already contains within this array it won't be added again and we need to do this for both cases so after complete let me add a road node here over here in both cases this to a macro um, get that oh wait I don't think we can put this inside a macro because we are using some local variables yeah see so let me undo that and simply duplicate Okay. All right. Now we have an array that contains all the selected actors. So once this part is completed, or else, so whatever the exit we take, now we can get these actors and uh, run a for each loop then each element toggle select call it with a true right now see oh, let me disable the debug what no no. See, everything is selected. Oh, let me remove the box now. From here. And also, 
uh, we need to add this add the actors we select here into this selected actors array otherwise they won't be registered with the player controller so get selected actors add unique in case we have already selected them they won't be duplicated all right now see I can come out there I can select them easily okay nice and we can select individual ones also by just clicking all right and also click one and press shift and drag click so everyone is clicked all right so that's it i'm gonna stop this episode right here and thanks for watching as always project files will be available for the download in the patreon page link would be in the description below and if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patreon club see you in another episode goodbye